All right, guys, we got a John Deere commercial zero turn in here. I'm going to show you another common issue. It's these bearings that are in the frame that hold that caster for it. A lot of times they'll wear out. This one's broken. The top one is broken. Uh, pieces of that bearing have fallen through and causing a big issue. So I'm going to jack it up here and show you what's going on. Uh, the customer noticed the fork. The caster was moving up out of that arm there. But do me a favor, guys, real quick, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. Now you can see how it's wobbling around. That top bearing is completely shattered, and also that bolt there is missing. That's a common thing, and that's usually on this side because that arm is so long. So I'm going to show you how uh, what to do as far as that goes as well. But first thing, I'm going to remove this top nut. It takes a 36 millimeter. The nuts aren't super tight, and normally when you have that nut, that top nut removed, you can just slip that caster uh, fork right on out. But in this situation, since I have pieces in there, it's going to uh, take just a little bit of persuasion on my end to, to knock it on out of there. And this zero turn has about 1,700 hours on it, and the other side was completely fine. Now that I got this fork out of here, I'm going to wipe this grease, and these little score marks on that spindle are just from the top pieces of that bearing going on top of the lower bearing. All right guys, so I'm about to use my air hammer to knock out what I just figured out was the, uh, this is the body right here that my finger is touching. Uh, the camera's not gonna really gonna focus too well. That's the body of the top bearing. The, the bottom bearing is still in there, however, uh, the race, this is the top race, and then the other race, you know, is reversed, you know, upside down. The only thing keeping that bottom bearing in is the seal that we'll have to replace right here. So that's what's keeping that bottom bearing from just falling right out right now. So what I'm going to do is just take my air hammer, or you can do this with a punch or something, and I'm going to knock the body of that top bearing as well as the bottom bearing and that seal should all come out at once. That's why I love having an air hammer. It makes things like that so fast and easy. Now I'm going to show you the hardest part of this job is getting the races out. And I'm also going to show you the part numbers from John Deere. So guys, I did another video showing you how you can buy every part you need for your John Deere, but I'm just going to kind of go over, I'll, I'll put a link down in the description of that video. Um, but anyway, I just kind of want to go over real quick. Uh, John Deere is going to call these races, they're going to call them bearing cups. They're going to call the actual roll of bearing, they're going to call that a bearing cone. Um, it's kind of weird, they call like bolts, they'll call them screws or whatever, but anyway, you'll see the breakdown on there but just real quick you got an upper and a lower um, race and bearings they're two different sizes so the lower one is the JD8225 then the bearing that goes with that is JD8187 uh, the upper race is JD8253 um, upper bearing is JD8935 and then the seal that goes on the bottom even though this package, it comes with two. You only need one per side. AH98118. And then you're gonna need two washers. You're gonna need 24H1465, as well as M43747. And I'm assuming you got, this is just for like a lot of the Z930s, 960s. This is a 950M. A lot of them are pretty much the same, but confirm that uh, with your um, PIN number, which is product identification number, not VIN number. It's basically the same thing as a VIN number. So anyway, I'm going to show you guys the hardest part now is getting these races out. Um, usually the top one isn't too bad. You can kind of get a punch in there to grip but the bottom one is normally very difficult to do and i'm going to show you a little trick that i do to remove that so the top bearing race is usually pretty easy i'm just going to go ahead and use my air hammer to remove that one and you can do that with a regular punch or a hammer 
It's this bottom one that's always a problem. Just the design of the body of that uh, arm, it usually doesn't allow you to get a punch in there to get enough bite on that race. So I'm gonna show you a trick if you have a welder, uh, what you can do to get that out really easy. And then after that, I'm gonna show you what you can do if you don't have a welder to get that lower race out of there. Now, here's the part number for that lower race what I'd like to do is find a washer that'll fit inside of that race and still gives me a little bit of room to make a tack weld on the edge of that uh, race. So what I'm going to do is, now once I've found my washer, I'm going to get that washer in there as level as I can, and then I'm going to take my MIG welder, and I'm just going to tack that washer to the race, but be careful not to weld the race to the frame or the uh, arm of the unit. Once I have a few tacks in place, you know, three or four tacks, now you can take your hammer or your punch, and in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my air hammer and knock that race right out of there. It's that easy. Now here's a look at that washer and that race. So the crucial part of that trick is having a welder and most of you may not have a welder or feel comfortable uh, doing that. So what I would recommend, just go to Harbor Freight and get some cheap punches like I have here. And there's several that I've like kind of, you can see how I've kind of ground into this one and made it specifically for certain jobs. And this one right here is for the job that I just showed. So it's kind of curved and I kind of got it notched out right there. Uh, you can get away with just doing that with a punch, you know, manipulate that punch, modify that punch a little bit, and you can get in there and knock that bottom race out. Uh, it's just gonna take a little bit more time just using a hammer and a regular punch um, like so. But if, in case you're wondering, the thing that I used with my uh, air hammer here, I ordered this, this is a blue point. Um, PHGL710 and I specifically ordered this because of its um, the the length of it and the diameter of it it really is very helpful fits into pretty much all the air hammers and the beautiful thing about this is that it also has a lifetime warranty and I think this is either my I think the probably about my third one it'll get all mangled up and when the snap-on guy comes, I can just swap it out and he will replace it with a new one. Now that we have the old bearing races removed, it's time to install the new bearing races. So you wanna get both that top and bottom race installed. Then next up, we're gonna be packing the bearings with grease. Pack those roller bearings with grease. Here's the old, everybody knows this trick, all the old timers. Get that grease in the palm of your hand and just sit there and work that grease into those rollers until you see it popping through the other side. It's a messy job, but you wanna go ahead and get those bearings packed full of grease as best you can. And then after we have everything assembled, we'll also grease up the entire thing with a grease gun. All right, guys, so now that I got both of the bearings packed with grease, it's time to put in the seal. This is the lower seal. Um, it uses a plastic cap on the, on the top. We'll do that last. But you'll notice there's nothing written on the seal. Um, but I'm going to give you guys um, just some advice here. That lip right there, see how that rubber is tapered? So the edge of that lip is going to go towards the grease or the oil. Uh, for, for seals so the seal is actually going to make contact right here on the caster wheel fork and I'm going to demonstrate so as you would come along here it's going to uh, conform to the size of this fork here on the spindle and fits nice and snug and you can see how that seal comes off. Now, when we go to remove this, uh, don't just pull it off, just twist it off so you don't uh, distort that rubber lip right there. Now, you may be tempted, and I, I've been tempted in the past myself, to go ahead and put that seal on, 
slide the bearing on which is going to mate right here and notice like earlier in the video I may have shown all this um, area right here that's not going to be important that's just where all the little shrapnel and everything pieces of the bearings and all that was just really uh, digging into the spindle shaft uh, the pieces uh, the rollers probably from that top bearing pieces of metal but the bearing that we're going to install mates right here but what what I was saying is you may be tempted to put that bearing in slip this in from the bottom and just tighten up the nut but don't do that because you could if everything's not lined up properly you could mess up the body of this seal and it not do right so what I recommend doing is you're gonna have to kind of use both hands at the same time you're gonna put that bearing in that direction up into the bottom race and then you're gonna tap in this seal and I recommend using like a little mallet with a rubber or plastic head there to do that All right, so once we get the fork up through the bearings, you're going to need to install two washers and, and this um, lock nut. Now, this is a brand new one. The other one is fine, but I like to get a new one. That way I have a fresh new nylon insert. So there's a, a washer like this, and there's a concave washer. And basically what this is is like a, uh, basically it's like a uh, lock washer. So the way you want to install it is like this, to where the dome is up, not like where it's dished down like a bowl, not like that. Otherwise, it's not doing anything because basically what's going to happen is this nut compresses against that and acts as an additional locking for the, so we got the nylon insert plus it basically we have a lock washer. Once I have a few threads started on that spindle, I'm just gonna take the socket and turn it with my hand just to kind of run it down, make sure I'm not cross-threading that nut before I put an impact on it. Now, I don't recommend you uh, use a big impact to tighten it down too tight. You just wanna get it snug enough to where there's no play in the bearings of that spindle. But it's not bad to use an impact just to speed up the process but just make sure you just don't over tighten it make sure it's turning rotating nice and easy and then also grip it from the bottom and just see if you have any play in those bearings but you want it just snug enough where you don't have any play but it also turns and rotates freely like you see here now that slack that you're seeing right, finally right guys we're going to address the last common issue well the last now once all that's done i'm going to take video. my grease several gun, common issues with fill these it up mowers with grease but, till you see that grease uh, coming these up bolts around break that hold that top bearings this arm and now here we're going to put that frame top dust cap and they normally on. break on this and right side the best way in my opinion is to put this on is just be so by hand and a lot more leverage uh, equal now, the newer ones, they've downward, actually made this arm longer, so they're using utilizing both of those holes. I don't know why they didn't do it originally, but they only got one on these older models. But if you don't want to go to John Deere and get the updated um, harder bolt that they recommend, it's like a black uh, bolt as opposed to these zinc-coated uh, bolts, you can just go to Ace or somewhere, Fastenal, whatever, 
and get a grade eight bolt uh, like I did this morning. Uh, this is a half inch uh, 13 thread count and it's two and three quarter inches long. And then what I recommend instead of using like a nylon insert uh, nut, I like to use top locking nuts. And basically the difference is this is metal and it's they basically took a regular nut and they've uh, kind of pressed it to where it's deformed just a little bit on the end and that makes it uh, a locking nut and so it'll turn nice and easy all the way up till it gets to the end and these just uh, are, are tighter versus a nylon type nut and when you're getting a nylon insert like you can see the grooves already cut into this nylon here so that one's already been already been run down on threads before so anyway um, they have these washers, big washers. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and that will be the end for this mower. All right guys, so this bolt is, you don't need to two and three quarter inches long. You probably two and a half would be ideal. Uh, for some reason, the new bolt that John Deere comes out with is almost about this long. It sticks out way past the uh, nut that they provide with it. Um, but anyway, this is two and three quarter inches long. The bolt, you could pro they didn't have a two and a half inch. The ones I had were only uh, two inch, so it was barely even gripping into the nylon, in uh, not, I'm sorry, the uh, top locking section of the nut, so it probably was not even a, uh, activating or making contact with the threads, so it was too short. So I just had to deal with what I had available to me. But anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. hope it helps you out. If you're having either one of these issues, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll have more videos like this coming soon, guys. Thanks for watching.